This is part 66 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to check or uncheck all checkboxes with another single checkbox using jQuery. We'll be working with the example that we started in part 65. So please watch part 65 from the ASP.NET MVC tutorial before proceeding with this video. Notice that at the moment when we navigate to the index view, we don't have a checkbox within the header. So if I have to select all of these rows, then I have to individually select each checkbox. Just imagine how much time it's going to take if I have 50 rows within this table. So we want to provide a checkbox within the header. And then if I select that checkbox, we want all the other checkboxes to be automatically selected. If I deselect the checkbox in the header, then automatically the rest of the checkboxes should also be deselected. Let's see how to achieve this using jQuery. So the first step is to reference the jQuery script file. Now at the moment, if you notice our MVC demo project, we don't have a script for a folder here and we don't have the jQuery script file. Now, if you create an ASP.NET MVC4 application using internet application template, then you would get that automatically. Let me explain what I mean. So here I have fired up Visual Studio. Now let's say I'm creating a new project. So file new project and then let's select ASP.NET MVC4 web application and once I click OK, then we have a template here. Now when we create an MVC demo project, we have chosen empty template. That's the reason why we don't have scripts folder within this project. But then if you select internet application and click OK, that would create an MVC application like this. And look at that, we have a scripts folder there. And then we have several jQuery files. And the jQuery file that we are interested in here is this jQuery-1. 7.1.min.js. So this is the minified version of the jQuery file. So that's what we need. So let's navigate to that folder in Windows Explorer. And to do that, simply right click on the scripts folder, open folder in Windows Explorer, copy that script file. And then let's go back to our MVC demo project. And let's create a folder here. And let's call it scripts. And then let's paste the script there. OK, so we have the jQuery script file. The next step is to reference that script file within our view. OK, so let's drag and drop the script file. OK, now look at this. It uses this syntax when we drag and drop that. But we know this script folder is present within the root directory of the web application project. So what I'm going to do is instead of using this, I'm going to use the tilde character. Tilde indicates the root directory within that we have got scripts folder and within that we have the jQuery file. All right, so now let's write the jQuery. So let's use a script tag, specify the type as text slash JavaScript and the language is JavaScript. Okay, so within the opening and closing tag of this script, um, um, you know, we are going to write our jQuery. And so let's start writing jQuery. Dollar, dollar indicates jQuery. So we're going to write a function. So let's close that. All right, so what do we want to do? Now, for the first thing is, at the moment, we don't have a checkbox within the header. So let's go ahead and include a checkbox. So this is the text that is displayed at the moment. Instead of that, we need a checkbox. So input type is equal to checkbox. And then let's give it an ID and let's call it check all because we're going to use that for that purpose. OK, so with these changes, let's refresh this view and the sec select text should be replaced with a checkbox. Now, when I click this, all the checkboxes should be selected. If I deselect this, all the checkboxes should be deselected. So what is driving the selection or deselection? Clicking on this checkbox in the header. OK, so when we click that checkbox, then we have to you know do something so first of all you know for the click event handler we need to write the javascript in order to fire the click event um, basically we need to identify that checkbox control and how do we identify the checkbox control using its id check all and to find that we use dollar so we want to find this checkbox by its id so i'm going to use the pound symbol the hash symbol 
hash and then what is the ID of the checkbox it is check all okay so once we have the checkbox you know once somebody clicked on it then we want to write another function okay so what should happen when we click on that check all checkbox basically you know the rest of the checkboxes should be selected if that is selected if it, that is deselected then they should be deselected okay so what we're gonna do now is find the ID of the rest of the checkboxes okay so what is the ID of the rest of the checkboxes that checkbox is present right here so the ID is employee IDs to delete and the name is also the same thing now to find these checkboxes I'm going to use the name instead of ID because if we use the ID selector we're just going to get one checkbox with that ID but we know that all the checkboxes you know in these rows have the same ID and same name so we basically want to find them by name if we want to retrieve all of those checkboxes so that's what I'm going to do now okay and how do we find them by name so again dollar so checkbox is an input element so input and what is the name of that so I'm using this name filter so find an input element with the name whatever is the name so what's the name of our checkbox employee IDs to delete so take that and paste it right there so find all the checkboxes which has got that name and then what we need to do with those checkboxes we need to set an attribute on that checkboxes what attribute do we need to set the checked attribute now one thing to keep in mind is you know when you check this this checkbox has an attribute just like how it has got ID name it has an attribute called checked so if that attribute is set to checked then that will be selected okay otherwise it will not be selected okay so let's set the attribute using ATTR function and we want to set the checked attribute now do we want to set this to checked or unchecked you know that depends on the state of the um, checkbox that we have in the header if it is selected then these should be selected if it is unchecked then these should be unchecked so the selection of these checkboxes depends on the state of the checkbox in the header so this checked attribute value should be depending on the checked status of you know we are saying this dot checked so what does that mean which what is this referring to this is referring to the checkbox on which you are clicking so what is the checkbox that we are clicking on the check all checkbox that is in the header so if it is checked then set that attribute to checked if it is unchecked set it to unchecked it's as simple as that alright so let's put a semicolon there save everything let's go and refresh our view and see if it's gonna work as expected so let me select this look at that all the checkboxes are selected if I unselect that all of them are unselected now look at this we have everything selected now if I unselect one of the checkbox then the checkbox within the header should be automatically um, unchecked similarly if I don't have any of them checked and then I start to check each one of them and when I reach this point you know I have only this checkbox to be checked if I check this then the checkbox in the header should also be automatically selected let's see how to achieve that now where is the click happening now on the checkboxes within the data rows okay so when somebody clicks those checkboxes depending on whether if all these checkboxes are checked you know if that's the case then we need to have the header checkbox checked otherwise don't check it so let's go ahead and write the code for that all right so find all the checkboxes which has got this name okay and the length so the number of those checkboxes basically even before that when we click on any of the checkboxes which have which has got this name then what should happen we should execute some JavaScript
okay so what should happen at that point of time I'm going to find all these checkboxes so I'm going to get the count of all those checkboxes with that name okay so if or if the count of checkboxes with that name is equal to so what are we doing here if the count of all the checkboxes we just got this name okay if that is equal to the count of all these checkboxes with that name that are checked then what should happen check all checkbox should be selected okay so what are we going to do we're going to take this one and then set the ATTR I mean checked attribute using ATTR function so set check the status to checked it's as simple as that so let's go ahead and refresh this view and see if it's gonna work so now if I start to check look at that at this point the length of checkboxes which has got that name doesn't match with the same set of checkboxes that are checked so the moment I check this look at what's gonna happen that is selected but then if I uncheck any one of this now the uncheck is not happening in the header that should happen as well and when that should happen in the else part it's as simple as that okay so what should happen at that point of time we want to remove so if everything is selected and if I unselect at least one of them then the count is not going to match in which case we want to remove this checked attribute of the header okay so we're going to take this one and simply say remove attribute and which attribute do we want to remove checked attribute all right so let's save that let's go ahead and refresh this view and see if it works look at that the moment I uncheck this look at that that goes away and the moment I select this it comes back and then if I uncheck that all of them gets unchecked so we have the full functionality there now another thing that I want is look at that at the moment I don't have any client side confirmation so if I select a checkbox here and then click delete selected employee that's going to delete that row now I don't want that before we actually delete the row we want a confirmation box like this okay so if I don't select any of the rows and then click that delete selected employees then we should we should show a confirmation no row selected to delete and once I click OK nothing should happen on the other hand if I have a few of the rows selected and then once I click delete selected employees depending on how many rows are selected we should display this message four rows will be deleted if I click OK the form should be posted to the server and the rows should be deleted on the other hand if I click cancel then the form should not be posted and no row should be deleted let's see how to achieve this again this is going to be very simple and straightforward alright so how are we going to achieve this now we need to find the rows count okay so how do we find the row count depending on you know how many of these checkboxes in the data row are selected we're gonna find the number of rows that we want to delete okay so how do we get access to those checked simply use this expression that's going to give you you know basically the number of checkboxes that are checked okay but then when should that piece of code get executed whenever we click the delete selected employees button so on the click of that button on the client side that's when we need to execute you know the function that we are going to write so first of all let's include an ID for that submit button at the moment it doesn't have an ID so let's give it an ID and let's call it B, uh, btn submit all right so let's take that and then go back here and write the jQuery so dollar and then we want to find the element by ID and if that's the case we use the ID selector which is hash symbol 
and then the ID of the element is uh, button BT and submit and then when somebody clicks on that what should we do we should write a function okay so what should we do we should find the checkboxes that are checked and I'm going to use a variable here a JavaScript variable count and we are going to initialize to that one if that count is 0 so if the count is 0 then what should happen we should get an alert box like this no row selected to delete okay and then it should just have that OK button so we use the alert JavaScript function so alert and then we will simply say no rows selected to delete and this alert box will just display OK button it will not have OK and cancel alright and then we don't want the form to be submitted to the server so we want to return false okay because there is nothing to delete so there's no point in, uh, point in posting the form to the server alright okay on the other hand if the count is not zero then what should happen we want to display this message number of rows will be deleted okay so how do we get access to the number of rows now basically to get OK and cancel buttons then we need to show a confirmation box and to show a confirmation box in JavaScript we use confirm function so return confirm and then what is the message what are the rows number of rows is present in this variable so count plus rows will be deleted okay so depending on which button you have clicked if you have clicked on the OK button this confirm function is going to return true if you have clicked on the cancel button then it is going to return false if it returns false the form will not be posted to the server okay so let's go ahead save everything and let's refresh this view and see if it's gonna work so I had don't have anything selected I click this button look at that no row selected to delete I click OK the form is not posted to the server nothing happens on the other hand I select one row delete selected employees look at that I get one row will be deleted if I click cancel the form will be the form will not be posted to the server and nothing happens on the other hand if I click OK the form will be posted to the server that row is deleted so if we select all the rows click that so two rows will be deleted click cancel nothing happens alright now we have seen you know how to reference a script file you know from the local folder here so I have the script file here and then we have referenced that um, in our application now Microsoft Google jQuery all of these have actually hosted the jQuery file for us on their website so if you don't want to have a local copy of the jQuery file on your web server instead if you want to reference them from those servers you can do that as well so instead of you know having a script file here and then referencing that in my application what I can do is I can have that URL so here basically I'm using the Google version okay so I can have that URL and then set that as the source instead of referencing it from our local folder okay so since I am referring it from Google I can get rid of the scripts folder altogether okay I don't need that any longer so I save this I refresh this view and the application should continue to work in the same way look at that I select that you know the jQuery is working okay so basically now we are referencing the jQuery from that specific site in this case from Google site all right on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day